Hello world, it's Becca. It's Jason. We are on an epic road trip. Yes, we are. Uh, actually coming back. Yeah, we, well, we did an eight hour drive eight to hours. North Carolina. And I said I had to film a movie called Kill Giggles. Uh, and she was kind enough to ride along with me and take me to make sure that my <laughs> vehicle didn't break down. And that he like didn't die of tuberculosis yeah, on the way. I'm still a little bit sick. Uh, He's a longer. <laughs> but we, uh, so we decided that we were going to do uh, our, one of our lists. So this is Triple B Theaters. Best horror road trip movies. What she said. I think gonna... Wrong Turn is exactly what we need to talk about right now because we are in Virginia and she will show you some of the, the roads that we were taking. Yeah. with. The, it was very, very beautiful. Very pretty, beautiful. very green. But it we were in an area that I'm sure if we had taken taken a wrong turn we could end up in this movie the 2002 film it was uh jeremy sisto it actually had a really solid cast yeah of, eliza uh, dushku yeah that uh, they've all gone on to Fame. do to do more things yeah. uh that em uh, emmanuel sheer sheer why sheer i don't know how to say her name i don't know, I don't know, know what it's fun when you try hey hillbilly's gone bad yeah. and that's in, anytime you are driving on a road trip like we're doing and you're in, you get into a small town and you <clears throat> like notice that your gas is low or something mm -hmm. and you're like, oh man, this is just like the movies. If you're in a small town, you don't know where the hell you are and you get lost, well, you could be uh, abducted and uh, uh, tortured. I think it ended up being a better movie than I think anybody ever thought it would be. Yeah. In the sense it had good characters. Uh, you know, good. I think I've seen most of the sequels, villains. and they're all okay. There's, I mean, it's there. Right. I mean, it doesn't have like the cast. It's the same basic framework, but well, without the. Was it part two that had Henry Rollins? Because I was like, all right, Henry Rollins is in here. It's, he's in one of I them, and remember. I was pretty sold I, by I, that. I right guess I guess they were in, inbred, and no, I don't guess I, they I think, were. I think I think they were supposed to be inbred. Yeah, but yeah. we'll edit that out if they weren't. It, no, they weren't. <laughs> it plays on the old deliverance idea. Yes. Uh, they just, you know upped it with like the gore and the effects. And I felt like we were going to start filming that when we pulled up at the Frosty Bossy because we got out and we're like, oh, stretching our legs, you know, we got yeah. like out of state plates and like, this is a cute, quaint little town. Yeah, you started yeah, talking about and it. it was like, oh, She whoa. started recording it on her phone and everybody <laughs> that was standing at the window were just like, who is this? And they're dead. Right. We are getting ready to go eat at the Frosty Bossy. Frosty Bossy in okay. Virginia hey, somewhere. Coburn, Virginia. We might have to make a little, we might have to make a lap down there, a little. See the little town. Main stretch, it's really kind of cute. Hmm. And then there's a Paul Bunyan thing. We're going to find out what that is too. Okay, this is the Frosty Bossy. We are going to get killed because we are obviously tourists and we have asked people questions and we are going to picnic by well, the Oki Canoe. Mama Kitty raising her little kittens in the trash can. <laughs> but yummy food, yeah. Cats jumped out of the trash can, essentially. Well, first mom jumped down, and there's two little kittens on oh, cute. Yes, I'm playing with kittens, sort of. But mom's kind of bitchy. <laughs> Jason gave mom's her trying to survive. Yeah. Jason gave her like a little chunk of hamburger, and the kids wanted it too, and she like flat out was like, nope, took it away from them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, mom didn't notice that. No, I gave her a piece over here too. Oh. I think we walked back into what 1950. Yeah. So we ate at the drive-in. Okay, and now we've got this Lay's Center for the Arts and Hardware. Love sign over here. Yeah, see, there is. It says Mine Training Center. So there is a very, very large power plant. And I think that's probably where everybody is. And probably everybody around here is a coal miner. I think that's all of it. Too. I think we've seen the entire town. Now we need to find a gas station so we can go to the bathroom because the drive-in didn't have one. So we drove over to this place because we thought this was Paul Bunyan. But then we found out this is just a kitchen cabinet place and it's the red oak guy and he's holding a flag, not an axe. I would... So we were almost in wrong turn, but instead we ended up in a very nice area. Very nice town, very nice people. But, very uh, awesome so place. So wrong turn is my first pick. Okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is what I'm going to go with. Right. And so, there's a hitchhiker right in front of us. Oh, if you can man. only turn this camera around, but right. you have I, an iPhone. I have an iPhone. I have an iPhone. Um, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the ultimate road trip gone wrong. 
Um, yeah, that's like the OG, I would think, of the these kind yeah, of road trip movies. Yeah, which is one of the reasons why I felt like I needed to put it in there. We're I not going to so. say what my, it can maybe be my honorable mention, although we're going to try not to do honorable right. mentions. Yeah. Sally and Franklin. Yeah, he, he needed to die. I wanted him to die, like, from the very get-go. Sally, she was a saint for putting up with him. Yeah. I don't care if he's my brother or not. You can push your own goddamn wheelchair through the forest. And, well, he couldn't. And actually, honestly, neither could she. <laughs> but <laughs> the cautionary tale: don't go where you don't belong. Right. Don't um, walk into a house and start just messing around and uh, pretend like no one lives there when clearly someone does. Why would you do that? I don't know. I'm like, it wasn't even like they were looking for anything. I mean, they just walked straight the fuck in. I, I think Leatherface was right. Mm-hmm grab the first guy i mean that's home invasion basically yeah I mean, and you're in you're in texas so you probably do have the right to defend your property the classic sliding door scene yes the and the meat hook, meat hook scene. creativity that out of necessity we should interview john dugan and he can tell us a little bit about it maybe okay so that was my number five that's a good one that's a classic one out of I, my uh, list <laughs> I appreciate yes. the old Great. Texas Chainsaw. I really like the remake, too. I know a lot of people yeah. shit on it. I like the I... remake. I like the remake prequel, which is another reason why I wasn't going to include this one in the list, because that made it to my reboot and remake list. But the other one, oh, that, nice. that was also on our reboot list. Yeah. So. Well, I'm going to switch gears and go towards uh, Natural Born Killers. Mickey which and Mallory. Is, uh, is it kind of a road trip movie? Because they just, you know, they're on a killing spree, basically. Right. Uh, they decide... To elope after they kill Rodney Dangerfield, which, who kills Rodney Dangerfield? which he was just a horrible person. You know, Juliette Lewis, who's always just so good at being crazy, and Woody Harrelson, who just kind of proved to everybody that he could be crazy in that movie and could do things other than playing Woody from Cheers. Like I revisited it just a couple months ago, honestly, and it it still holds up because obviously it's about the how the media and today it's even more so it can right. uh, like perpetuate. Uh, violence and just yeah because they became like rock stars they were yeah they they made them absolute rock stars it was, it was kind of like right. the OJ more, era this was before yeah before like but the now it and could totally be video. like yeah now it could totally be YouTube viral, you know video whatever and it would whatever. probably make them even bigger, bigger sensations uh, yeah. they can also actually revisit it as in a sequel and they're like still on they their on their killing spree because you know how it ends like they they're just walk off into the sunset basically uh tommy lee jones who just plays the warden which is just just great like character acting it's yeah. oliver stone directed yeah i mean oliver stone's going to get all the heavy hitters you yeah. had tom sizemore who that guy i just love that dude he's always been great anything you ever see tom sizemore in he will steal the show no it's the scene that was cut i used to love the barbarian brothers who did the movie Barbarian Brothers and Think Big and stuff like that. And uh, they were actually in a scene that was cut, the gym scene where Mickey and Mallory go in and uh, basically cut off one of the, one of the twins' legs. And uh, it's that's you can find that out there in the world. Natural Born Killers, just batshit crazy kind of road trip movie, just all over the place. Uh, political, like uh, Oliver Stone's yeah. Yeah, view on the, on the world and the media. It was just kind of like that MTV generation. And it's very much filmed that way, too. Yeah. And if, so if you haven't seen it, if you're kind of, you know, if you're a younger person and you haven't seen Natural Born Killers, go watch it because it yeah. is nuts. I need to revisit that now. Very good. We can watch it when we get to my place. Okay, wait, okay. That's the first one know, on the list, always. the never-ending list of, we're going to watch these tonight. Always. Okay, so my number four um, it highlights the highlights the number two rule of being on a road trip, and that is don't pick up a hitchhiker. Yes. And that is creep show too. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the ride, lady. I always somehow felt like I know what you did last summer, like really like copied a lot of that. Oh, I don't know. probably. Yeah. So this chick is banging a... Gigolo, I guess. It's just a gigolo. He is, he is. And she's got to go home to her husband. She's in a hurry. So Stephen King and George Romero, right? That's right, it. Right, that's it. Yeah. And there are only three of them in the second. Yeah. There's, there are three segments in Creep Show 2. I believe there are five in Creep Show 1. There's the Native American one. <laughs> and then the rap. I, I get some weird algae on my leg. It's, it's and I like, to, I, I like to watch that. Every time I see, I look out at the lake and I'm like, oh, I need to watch 
situation. Well, she's we've like, already talked about my love for the blob, and this had yeah. a lot of that kind yeah. of vibe to it. Her bad decision was basically she was in a hurry, and she hits this guy who was a hitchhiker on the side of the road, and she just decides to keep going because she doesn't I gotta get her. home. I'm late. That's right. Her husband can't know that she's fucking around on him. Okay, yeah, that's the worst of a human life for her, so it doesn't work out well for her. No. No. Uh, I guess we'll stay on the old Stephen King track here. Uh, Stephen King actually wrote and directed his very first film he ever directed, Maximum Overdrive. Oh, man. Which, which just speak, yeah, the soundtrack itself yes. is worth the yes. price of admission. It's basically all appliances, all electrical, all vehicles, everything just got to get, becomes that, like a life of its own. You have a steamroller rolling over a, a small child on a baseball field. You have uh, coke vending machines uh, knocking out or uh, killing um, your baseball coach. You have Emilio Estevez being, you know, cool 80s Emilio Estevez. So we were looking at trailers of all of these last night to kind of jog our memories for ones we haven't seen. In Stephen King. There was one that Stephen King did for this movie where it's he was like... kind of rude. A lot of people have directed Stephen King novels and stories. And I finally decided if you want something done right, you ought to do it yourself. People have asked him, like, so Stephen, why don't you direct anymore? B said, watch Maximum Overdrive. He said he was coked out of his mind. He doesn't even remember what he did half the time. It, everything coming to life and hunting down human beings. It is, it is an absolutely coked out movie. Uh, and I love it. I love that 80s camp horror yeah. comedy commentary on the world and maybe one of the very first times that you had the presence of a marvel villain with the mm. green goblin face which he uh, supposedly just he was inspired by yeah right no that's the damn yeah. green goblin and just give me an, another maximum overdrive give me i will i will reboot maximum overdrive right now i'm gonna need nah. some cocaine <laughs> and I, I just and i'm myself i'm gonna be emilio but i'm gonna go like bat shit nicholas cage crazy no we need nicholas cage that's who we need nice tool no what how dare you ever say anything nicholas cage can do anything he wants <laughs> maximum overdrive reboot with nicholas cage and me welcome to kentucky we're in kentucky <laughs> we went through five states to get to uh well, we no four, four four states to get to north carolina north carolina being one of them uh, on our Indiana way back, Indiana was one, but it's like ten minutes from like his house to Kentucky. But but now on our way back, we are uh, we went through Virginia, and now we're in Kentucky. So Wait, that's fine. Anyway, we're going through Harlan, Kentucky. Harlan. Harlan. Probably could have done a wrong turn here too. Actually, uh, my friend Ash Parker, I believe, is from Harlan, Kentucky. Sweet. And Hazard. She's an actress that you can see with me in Don't Fuck in the Woods too. When it comes out. When it comes out. out. My next one though is House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm -hmm. So great road trip movie. But like that's a, that's a no, they're going through the country, stopping at road attractions. They stop at Captain Spaulding. I mean, the guys are kind of cool to him. You know, they're like, "Hey, we want to see your stuff. Yes, we want to go on the murder ride." Yeah. You know, whatever. But the girls, Rain Wilson, and yeah, and, and uh, Chris Hardwick, Hardwick right? Yeah. The two girls, they both look like they are like smell fart the whole time. They're just like. The entire time. I'm like, this is cool. It's cool fun. as shit. I would, I would definitely take that. I would, we, we should would, add that to our, our trip. We would die on the murder ride, and we would be fine with that. Well, I don't know about fine with dying. I just I, I would like to I, maybe go run for my life a little bit, but I, I want to be... I'm the final girl almost all the time now, thanks to Scott Shermer, so I want to survive. Yeah, but you don't, like, always come out right on the other end. <laughs> I think Devil's Rejects is my favorite of the this series so far. We'll see yeah, and I've realized as I've gotten older, it's one of my favorite movies ever. It's the last 10 minutes that I don't like. I love the fireflies, and clearly Absolutely. everybody else did too, or else that's not where Zombie would have taken it. Right. You know, like, I mean, I'm sure he wanted Dr. Satan to be some sort of villain that he could have in multiple movies, but clearly Dr. Satan wasn't where it was at. It was the fireflies. So that last 10 minutes, I'm just like, Baby and Otis. Huh? So. Yeah. Well, and that's another one of uh, Don't Pick Up Hitchhikers. Yeah. And the, the another one you're going to mention here in a little while. Yes. And... Uh, yeah. Which you could probably guess which one that would yeah, be. That's it's... that's one that's actually in the title. But... Yeah. Like, <laughs> just don't pick yeah, up hitchhikers. Yeah, just don't pick up hitchhikers. But I do, I would like to go on a roadside attraction uh, oh, that'd be so... tour. Like, well, we still have to go to we gotta find the, the Muskie. Muskie. The house from Ghost Keeper, which was in Banff. 
National Park in Canada. Well, my friends Marcus and Jesse, they were driving down and they found the uh, dinosaurs in uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll create a Patreon for our roadside attraction yes. uh, tour. Yes. So my next movie, because that sounds like a fun ride that... It almost sounds like a joy ride if we were to That's right! To do that. That's right, Rusty Nail! And when you first ever seen it advertised, you're just like, oh, just another pretty yeah, yeah. young people. Yeah. But this one ended up being really good. Like, it's Paul yeah. Walker, Lily Zobiski, and Steve Zahn, which Steve Zahn, you think, kind of, like, he doesn't fit there. And I but love... he was he he was pretty cute. Yeah, back he, then. Was, he was. He was a little. Well, and I love Steve Zahn. I mean, he, had, I, I he's, think he's he wasn't great. quite the, you know dorky doof that he's been like he, yeah he definitely became now. much more of the comedy they were all guy. in college when they talk about the internet and joyride it's yeah. not the internet we it's know 2001. now it's 2001 <laughs> 2001 yeah, I mean, internet was not it's, the internet it's, trust yeah. us. he buys a car to go find his girl because he's yeah. gonna go he finally wants to meet her and go Lily. be with her and lily's miski uh, yeah so, and there's a so, cb in there yes there's a cb so they are like they're the boys are going and they decide to uh and he just gets his brother out of jail right like steve zahn was yeah. like in jail and it's like so it's an adventure for them to like reconnect so of course they're gonna start fucking with the truck driver yeah pretending just... like he's a girl which i think that nobody would remember this movie quite so much if they hadn't picked such a great name Kane, Kane. Kane. yeah and they which is buffalo bill like paul walker and steve zahn like they they had good Kevin chemistry Kane. together Hey, hey, Rusty Nails, this is Candy Cane. But the kids deserve it, but they don't. But they I mean, don't, they yeah. Don't. I mean, it's I mean just they don't kids deserve that. They're being the, assholes, but they don't deserve it's the like level we, we of shit. We all prank called people. Yes. Uh, and did, like, stupid stuff like that. If you don't know what that but, is, Google. Google right. what a prank call is. Yeah, because you can't do that <laughs> yeah, shit now. Yeah, you can't now. do it anymore. So you can put this movie anywhere, and, like, if you prank call, like, the wrong house, right. or you ding-dong ditch on knock on the door of the wrong house. Again, you can uh, Google that, kids. Yeah, and it's like... Security cameras probably killed that game. Just, they get the wrong trucker, and... Uh, Rusty nail. He did, not, he did not like being toyed with, and he just sends these dudes on this wild ride because he kidnaps uh, Lily Zobiski. Well, and you never see him. You, you never, never see him, which I mean, makes like, it more frightening. It's like right. the jaws of a, 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 I guess he's kind of the jaws of... of truckers. A, a, but they do get to hear him yeah. murder the guy in... Yeah, next rip his door jaw to him. Off yeah. And, yeah. Whoa, that's like terrifying when they know that they've just directed this guy to room 17. They're like in room 16 or 18 or whatever, and they're like hearing this guy get murdered brutally, and they're like, it's hmm. it's a solid movie, and it's it's definitely had its share of sequels at this point too. Yes. Uh, but the first one is uh, yeah. really awesome. good. A good suspense to it. Uh, well acted. Because uh, it's a strong cast of... Another cautionary tale? Yeah. And it's just, you know, maybe sometimes don't mess with people. Because yeah. some people just don't like it. Like rusty nail. Well, he's got this radio that's like AM, FM, and CB. Yes, I do. Yes. And he lives close to the interstate. So last time I was over there, I tried to see if I could get anybody on the CB. And I, I think truck drivers probably use cell phones now, too. <laughs> I, think, I think so. So my next one is Jeepers Creepers. This was also 2001. So we're, we're, we're teaching you a lesson here. The old people are going to teach you a lesson. We're going to the Wayback Machine. I didn't know anything about it. So you never saw the creature on the posters, um, the trailer. You can get the impression that there's something, you know, and there's, you see some wings and things, but, you, but they're still talking about him and they show the truck. I mean, that's a person, right? And I was so into the beginning. I love the brother and sister, I love their dynamic. They almost yeah. seem like well, brother Justin and sister. Long is yes. so good anyways. They had a very good explanation as to why they didn't have a cell. Because mm -hmm. she was the only one with the cell phone and she forgot the charger. Now though, it's just it doesn't happen quite as much. Well, because you have you cars know? that will charge your phone for you. Exactly. Things that make sense if you if you lived in that time. He goes down that tunnel and there are tons of bodies and shit. And I'm like, yes! Yeah, it had a good vibe, good creepy vibe going on. When they showed the creature, I was like, oh, what? And I think my first thing was like, the Mothman can drive? Just like with House of a Thousand Corpses, I kind of walked out like, eh. But now it is one of my favorite movies. If you're driving down a road, what, she and you see a it. very large, yes. She says it. Do you remember, you know how when people go do a thing in the in horror a movie that while, you know they shouldn't do? This is it, right here, North. what you're doing. Right, you see a big like drain pipe, and you've seen like this, you've seen something get thrown down there. You go to the nearest police station. Yeah, call the cops. 
Or give them an anonymous tip. We're going through Hazard pretty soon. Yeah. But we ain't going to Cooters, huh? I guess not. Can we go to Cooters? I think we can eventually. Yeah. Isn't Cooters somewhere in no, Kentucky? No. Yeah. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Oh, that's right. Doesn't yeah. it make sense that Cooters would be in Hazard? I, love I just saw somebody with a tattoo today of Justin Long's face. Can you watch with the but eyes. without the eyes. And it looks so cool. The fi like the final reveal, you know, the, the, like the wings and the face. And the, it was all very... Very well done. I like the sequel too. I really liked the second one. Yeah, I know it's the not kids on the school popular, bus. But... I thought that was the Susie and the Banshee song. I didn't mm. know that they lifted that from an old song. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Peekaboo. Susie and the Banshees. Great song. The, the oh, next one's our the... number one. So we oh, have so we're to do, do our Triple B trifecta. trifecta. This is Triple B Pe Theater. Yes, Triple B Trifecta. The Triple B, the B's are boobs, blood, and booze. And booze. 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 Booze, blood. We had a movie that's like, might have made it into one of our top lists, but we were like, you know what, this has everything. It ha it, and it a fits, good amount of Yes, it. it fits our topic, and it really it exemplifies Triple B Theater. So, boobs, booze, and blood. Look, I could enunciate that time. You, you, did, you okay? did very well. So, our Triple B Theater trifecta uh, winner? Yes, for road trips. For road trip films is Sonny and Michael Mahal's Party Bus to Hell. Rolf Konevsky. Rolf Konevsky directed. It is just... That shit crazy. Fun practical effects. Had all, plenty of boobs. It lots of booze. Just kind of didn't take itself blood. seriously. No, it's just a fun movie. And also, if you watch the trailer originally, it must have been called Bus Party to Hell. Yeah. And they must have decided, nah, that sounds wrong. So they changed it to Party Bus to Hell. <laughs> a bunch of, you know people in Vegas that uh, jump on a party bus and uh, unfortunately they get caught up in some uh, occult kind of things going on. I mean it it gets nuts like there is a there is possession there is a giant like demon creature uh, lots of blood yeah um, it's it's just fun like I had a blast watching it. Rolf Knepsky I, I always have to pimp out this movie there's nothing out there if you've never seen that movie watch it and remember when it was made. Yeah, they're just like, and when the Mahal brothers are doing a bunch of fun things now, like they're just, they kind of, once they started rolling, like they just are on this nonstop train of just fun. They're getting ready to do a movie called Bridge of the Doomed, I believe it is. There's still their Indiegogo uh, crowdfunding campaign out there, I believe. Zombie thing, right? Yeah, it's a zombie film, which, uh, you know, call me. I'll, uh, I'll cameo. Uh, it's a good time. Like they have fun. They have fun doing what they do and it shows and that's why it's one of our it's our very first it, it's, yes our very first it's our very first bestowed upon triple b trifecta winner all right it's simply your my number, number one, one which is you know actually party bus is a kind of a good lead-in to that yes. because my number one is that shit crazy <laughs> uh and it is a uh, highway to hell with chad Lowe. Uh, among other people, like not it's, affiliated. It's with song. it's full <laughs> of uh, cameos. Like Lita Ford shows up, looking hot as hell uh, for you know a quick cameo. The Stiller family is Ben Stiller, his mom, his dad. They yeah, are all in Anne Mira. in the movie. Jerry like Stone. it is. Um, it's just Christy Swanson. There's so much fun, crazy shit going on in this movie, and it's all like practical. Uh, C J Graham's Hell Cop kidnaps. Christy Swanson. And they're, they're going to elope. And Ch yeah, they're, they're driving through, going to elope, and uh, Chad Lowe's character has to drive into hell to save her. They drive off to a gas station, fill up, and then they, when they pass his old man there, he, he almost uh, wrecks, and he does that right in front of the hell cop. Uh, hell cop gets out of the car, pulls the door off, kidnaps Christy Swanson. Chad Lowe like wakes up after he gets punched unconscious, goes back to the gas station, and the old man's like, oh yeah, I know I know what happened, because it happened to me. Yeah. That's why I'm still here at this right. gas station. Right, yeah, and just my Just waiting my for my wife. Clara to come back. Yeah. So just, if you just drive down this road and you believe in hell, then, uh, well, you'll yep. get there. That, and that's pretty much it. You just have to that's keep it. driving back and forth and just keep believing, and eventually you'll just get there. Yeah, and he, he gets there and immediately just, uh, I mean, literally all hell breaks loose. C.J. Graham as hell cop is just, he's... He's very stoic and stern, like Part six he, he should be. Uh, it's hard for me to add, know if you're going to like it or not because it yes, is it's so... Yes, it's very campy. It, oh, God, I love it. I mean, it. if you watch the trailer first and the way the trailer is done, 
will tell you the tone of the entire movie. Oh man, it's it has just... almost like a it has like a comic book sort of feel to it. Like yeah. I was comparing it sort of like not in concept, but just in the presentation, sort of like Army of Darkness. It is on Tubi. Yeah. We fell asleep watching it last night. I mean, we didn't fall asleep because of the movie. But like, we no, were going to go to sleep, and we, we're like, let's put that fucking movie on. Film so long in the heat, I still got my V uh, yes. sunburn going on here. <laughs> but that's the stuff I love, and that's the stuff I love to make. I love to be in. Uh, so I think you should watch it. Yeah. That's my number one. My number one is actually the pinnacle of road trip movies yes. and cautionary tales. Absolutely. It is the Hitcher, the original Hitcher 1986 with C. Thomas Howell and Rutger Howard. Beautiful Rutger Howard. If Howell. you are dumb enough to pick up Rutger Howard, you deserve the shit that Jim Halsey gets. I still look at my french fries when I eat them, every single one of them. <laughs> Just don't pick up hitchhikers, and especially not very large, beefy, menacing But he's so ones. pretty, though. He's pretty in a very menacing kind of way. Absolutely. 100% okay. like, you know he's going to kill you, but he's like, but look, but, but it's look, Rutger Hauer, though. Look. You feel for the kid. You do. I yeah. mean, again. Well, C. Thomas Howell was a good choice because he did have that He's very got that baby, face, baby that, face. And at that point in time, too, he was kind of like, he was America's little sweetheart. Oh, or at yeah. least like, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. And that was Jennifer Jason Lee, too, right? Yeah, Jennifer Jason Lee, who, um, yeah, in case you haven't seen it, who has a, oh. She has, bad, she has a bad day, which is very one of the very, a very classic scene in, in cinema history, I think. It's yes. Definitely has to go down as one of the top uh, deaths in film. Yeah. Right? And it? usually I'm all about spoilers, but if somebody I mean, if hasn't seen, seen it, I don't, want, I don't want you to, I don't want to spoil that for anybody. It's, it's. Yeah, we won't tell you what visceral. happens if you haven't seen it, but uh, yeah, it but does it is happen. Great. It is great. And he flat out says, my mom told me I shouldn't pick up Hitchhiker's. And then Hitchhiker does all the things that mom told you that the Hitchhiker right. would do and more. Well, and I think the, like, one, what the original has going for it that the... It's the, it's the care. It's it's basically those two. It's, I mean, it's mostly it's definitely, just those two guys for the those most two. of the movie. But I think, too, it also has a lot to do with they they did some eight, crazy 80s like action weird stuff that just doesn't necessarily yeah. work today. As a, as a kid, it kind of disturbed me some, but... Man, I do love me some Rutger Hauer. Man, and I loved me some C. Thomas Howell. Over Rutger, really? Oh, well, I, what, 86? I was a 10-year-old girl? Hello. Yeah, so that's, I guess, is that our list? That is our list. That is so our list of road we, trip movies So we managed to go with trip. 10 plus our trifecta award, and then I kind of threw in another one. So, you did. Uh, yeah, so 12. 12 road trip movies. Go watch them. It's our show. We can do what we want. It's our show. This has been our epic road trip from the, the set of Kill Giggles. If you have more films that you would like to add to the list, just throw them down in the comments below. Or, you know, tell us what you think of the ones that we picked. Uh, tell me that you love Highway to Hell. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're in a Dodge Charger driving through Hazard, Kentucky, That's everybody. Right. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Which is not nearly as cool as it sounds. <laughs>